Hi, my name is Eric Martineau, and I'm the owner of Just Get Solar. I got us this text uh, Saturday from a family that I had been working with. Uh, I'd given them one proposal, and I was working on a new one because they wanted batteries, okay? And the woman writes me, and she says, look, our electric rates, our carrier has just moved it to 19.4 cents plus the Encore charges, which are about 4 cents. Well, I was typing her back, telling her what the Encore prices were. She wrote and said, that's 24 cents. i got to do something to switch. I said, look, the proposal I have in my hands right now for you is at 7.2 cents without a battery and 10.47 cents with a battery. And after 25 years, it's free electricity for the rest of your life. And that represents more than a 50% reduction today. Not sometime in the future, today. So I ran the proposal over to him. She and her husband looked at it that evening. She wrote me back and said, hey, sorry for the late text. We're ready to move forward. What's the number I need to put in there with the one on the batteries? I gave her a call and they're moving forward. If you've missed what's going on here in Texas right now, our rates have gone up by 70%. This is an article I pulled from the uh, Fort Worth Star-Telegram on June 9th, 2022. It says that Texas's heat wave will affect your electric bill. Hint, it's not going to be good. And hint, it isn't just because of the heat wave. And that's why I crossed that out. There are other factors, and they go on to explain that. It says, how much are our energy rates increasing here in Texas? Well, they claim by 70%, from 10.6 cents to 18.4 cents a kilowatt hour. It then goes on to say, if you're renewing your energy contract, you'll likely see a significant increase. Now, maybe you haven't seen this yet because you're in the middle of a contract and they haven't been able to contractually uh, raise your rates yet. But if you are, look what's going on. That blue line represents one year ago in June when rates were about 10.6 cents. And now, in just one year, they've gone to an average of 18.4. I know, the woman that you just saw, her rates are going to 24 cents. My rates, I called on mine, and they're going to 19 cents. So. I also went out to the Chronicle and read theirs. They too claim it's 70%, but the writer of this article also went out to a website called Power to Choose. I'd suggest you go there. There are over 109 retail electric providers on that website. And he says that the, the average was really 7.98 and it's gone up to 18.48. That's an increase of 132%. So Somewhere between 70 and 132% is the amount that our electricity has gone up by. Back to the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. It says, they ask the question, why are rates increasing? Well, they blame it on an increase in wholesale electricity. And then they call it market conditions. We'll go back to this, but here's the market conditions that they talk about. They say that natural gas, the prices have increased. They also say that the invasion of, the, of Ukraine is causing our prices to rise. Now, when I saw that, I thought, oh, give me a break. Really? You're going to blame this on the invasion of Ukraine, too? Well, yes, in fact, it happens to be that way. But I didn't understand it by just reading this article. I'll show you another article that explains it. They also talk about the weather-related disruptions that happened back in February when we had that bad freeze. And then they say because of all those things, the Public Utility Commission here in Texas has changed some laws and regulations and market rules. You see, you get a crisis, you can justify changing laws, regulations, and rules. So we have a war and a bad freeze, and we get to change the rules. So the Public Utility Commission has allowed the electric companies free reign to raise their rates so they can fix the grid. And we, the Texans, are getting higher costs. Hmm. Which of those do you think is the biggest problem? I say it's the laws, the regulations, and the market rules. I have found over my lifetime that when regulated monopolies cannot make money through innovating new products, what they do is they litigate. And I know I used to be a vice president for well, let's see, I've worked at AT&T, U.S. West, and Telepacific, all regulated monopolies, right, all tel in telecom, and I was vice president of research and development and operations, so I wasn't sales or anything, but that's where I was at. And so I've played in that realm before, and I found that when regulated monopolies can't figure out a way of innovating their way to profits, they litigate their way to profits, and that's, I think, what's happening right here. 
So I went to the Texas Tribune to get more information about what these market conditions were. It says, since the war in Ukraine began, Texas has been exporting more natural gas than ever before, sending much of it over to Europe. This gentleman, Todd Staples, who happens to be the president of the Oil and Gas Association here in Texas, says, people are lining up around the globe to get our product. What does that mean? That means the vice president of sales talked to the chief financial officer at these electric companies and said, you know what, if, or the gas companies, and said, you know what, if we sell our natural gas over to Europe right now because they're in a bind, they can't get any from Russia, they're willing to spend anything that we can get them, we can sell what we used to sell to Texans at 5 or 7x what we were getting here. I don't know the exact number, but that's the idea, right? That's where it's going. So Public Utility Commissioner Pete Lake, who was appointed by Governor Abbott after that winter storm to quote-unquote lead the agency in charge of ERICOT, right, to fix the grid, the ERICOT's the grid operator, he said they are no longer prioritizing Texas um, cheap power. What does that mean? Remember, the Public Utility Commission is supposed to be the watchdog working in our favor, the co consumer, to make sure that we have electricity that is affordable. And they're no longer worrying about that. Instead, they're working about grid reliability. Remind me to get back to that at the end of this presentation, right? And it says, but grid reliability has a price. Yes, a price that goes into you and I's pocketbooks. That's where it goes. Golding, with the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, said Texans are paying for last year's grid disaster. Now, wait a minute. I used to be a VP of operations. Part of the funds that came into my company were supposed to do what? Make sure that the systems were reliable, both in hot and cold weather, right? During disasters. They obviously weren't spending enough to keep it where it needed to be with the profits they were making, right? So he goes on and he says, on everybody's bill there will be these surcharges for paying for what happened last February. So, this is what happens. You and I have to pay to fix their problem. They're the ones that didn't take enough funding out of the profits they had in years gone by to make sure that their grid was resilient. And now that there's a crisis, you and I have to pay for that disaster, as they call it, right? But we're, who gets to keep the profits when they ship all of that natural gas over to Europe. Oh, they do. So the public has to pay to, in, to improve the infrastructure, but the individual companies get to pocket their profits when they send natural gas from Texas over to Europe. That's capitalism, folks, and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Because these market conditions they're talking about also allow you and I to make the decisions we want to make. You see, we are a deregulated industry, right? And so what does that mean? That means that, well, let me ask you this. Who is the chief executive officer in Family Incorporated in your family? You. Or maybe you're the chief financial officer or the chief operations officer. You get it? Who's in charge of the electricity at your home? And if you say the electric company, you're wrong. You are. And you can make a choice. You can put solar on your roof right now and lower those costs. So just like these companies are free to send natural gas that was drilled out of the ground here in Texas over to Europe because they can make more money, you and I have the right to lower our costs by putting solar on our roofs and they can't stop us from doing it. That's what's so cool about capitalism. So let me ask you a question. Do your appliances know the difference between electricity that you buy from a coal factory and spend 19 cents on versus the electricity that comes out of your solar panels and you pay 11 cents for? No. Do your Appliances know the difference between electricity that costs 23 cents. You get the idea. If you just go solar, you can lower those costs. I want to show you four examples of people that I've helped in just the last, I don't know, couple months to go solar and what their rates were. So you don't think I did this five years ago or something like that. This family just spent 21000 and that was after the federal rebates, okay? And they're going to get, over the next 25 years, 278,000 kilowatt hours of electricity. If you do the math on that, that means that they just got their electricity over the next 25 years frozen. It's not going to go up because there's a war in the Ukraine, right, for 7.6 cents a kilowatt hour. Now, why did I choose 25 years? Is that because solar panels quit working in 25 years? No. It's because they're warrantied 
for 25 years. And at the end of that warranty, they're still going to keep working because it's solid state electricity, but their loan will be paid off and at that point their electricity is free. So I'm only throwing it out there for 25 years because let's just assume the panels quit working the day after that warranty is up on the 25th year. They still got 25 years of electricity at 7.6 cents. Here's another example. This family just spent $17,580 to get 231,000 kilowatt hours of electricity guaranteed over the next 25 years and that too is costing them 7.6 cents. Now, neither of those had batteries. This one does. This family just put one in with batteries and they spent 54,681 and they're going to get 501,000 kilowatt hours over the next 25 years and that cost them 10.9 cents. Think about that. The woman that just sent that text to me, her electric company is about ready to charge her next month 24 cents and she doesn't control it. I'm able to get a battery for this other family for 10.9. And what was it the cost I told you for her? Well, this is 37,881 and they're going to get 361,000 kilowatt hours over the next 25 years, 10.4 cents. That's what I just sent that. That's the home that I was telling you about. Okay? This is what's so powerful about capitalism. Now, that was the end of my presentation until just a couple seconds ago as I was looking on my computer getting ready to roll this I got this email 12 minutes ago from Frontier Utilities, the company that I get my electricity from. And they said, Dear Eric, the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, ERICOT, has issued the following conservation appeal, effective today, July 11th, 2022. With the extreme hot weather driving record power, demand across Texas, the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, ERICOT, is issuing a conservation appeal asking Texans and businesses to voluntarily conserve electricity today, Monday, July 11th, between 2 and 8 p.m. Let me ask you folks, is the sun up in the summer in Texas between 2 and 8 p.m.? Yeah, it is. And this is their high demand hour. Can you imagine what would happen if all of Texans had solar right now on our grid? Would they be sending out this letter? I doubt it. It says that this is something that ERICOT has only done about 50 times since 2008. So this doesn't happen all that often, but we're about ready to push the limits of the grid. And they say, here's some things that you can do to conserve electricity. One, they say, turn up your thermostat. I turned mine off. You don't hear my air conditioning running in the background. That's why I'm sweating because, well, I didn't want the air conditioning making noise on the video, to be honest with you. But I turned off my electricity to make this, my air conditioning to make this video, right? Um, postpone running your appliances until later on this evening uh, or turn off your pool pump during these hours. You know what? I've got a better solution. You know what you can do? You can just get solar. And I'll show you how you can beat the utilities for probably, like these other folks, for less than half of what you're currently paying the utilities. This is capitalism. I love it. We can make these decisions. It's up to you and me as to where I get my electricity in this deregulated market. I would hope you make the right decision and just get solar.